All right, guys, hello again. Uh, this is pretty quick. Uh, I'm gonna try to talk to you guys. On this one, I'm, I'm gonna be a little more, this is about oscillations. And uh, what I'm gonna try to do is eventually, one way or another, I'm gonna try to get in front of you, get be in front of you guys in a, in a classroom and do some of this stuff. If um, if the TAs are at least gonna be able to meet with you guys, I can, I can step in and have the TAs do something else. Um, at the time, uh, whenever whenever is necessary, that may be more necessary uh, than not necessary. We'll see how that goes. But basically, there's a number of things I talk about when I talk about oscillations, and they're found in two places that are, I think, pretty good with the notes. In case everything, you know, in, in case everything uh, becomes difficult for us. My difficulty right now is opening up my notes, actually. Hold on a second. I'm having an issue here. Okay. Uh, so what we have here, guys, is, I mean, there's probably for, for this discussion that I'm doing right now, I'm just going to really briefly highlight some of what's going on with that. Uh, remember what I said last time? I think I, I think I put both of these on when I talked about thermal processes uh, in the other video that, that was, it was pretty long. Uh, we talked about this. We talked about different aspects of this. But you can find some, a lot of stuff on oscillations. Uh, in in fluids, thermal processes of matter, oscillations, waves, and also in oscillations. So these two things are kind of are, are highlight. I'm going to highlight them just a little bit right here. But you can also read this stuff. It's all in Canvas. It's all done in much more detail. I even used differential equations to solve how oscillatory behavior takes place. If you have a calculus background and you're listening to this video, but watching this video, go ahead and take a look at what I wrote there. Uh, in my notes on Canvas regarding the differential equations I've solved. It's pretty beautiful stuff, not particularly very difficult, but you know, if you've got the calculus background and you've done the stuff, go ahead and look at it. If not, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. There's other ways you can look at it and still get the right answer. Okay, so, um, and there's a lot here. I mean, in, in the discussions, guys, and you guys are going to be, you guys are going to come through as pros on this whole thing. We, Talked about a lot of stuff that you can say, and the derivation, like I said, is already is already in there pretty uh, pretty substantially, I guess you could say. Let me, let me write down a couple things really quickly, and then we'll, we'll kind of just look at it from there. Um, if you were, if, if there was no gravitational field to worry about or anything like that, you just said, okay, man, I got there is something like this, attached, you know, sorry, it's a radius R. A lot of times they call R, they'll call it A for amplitude sometimes. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into why that's the case sometimes. And if you've got a mass M, and it's, you're moving, and that mass is moving at a constant speed, and you're looking at it, it's moving at a constant speed B, and that's equal to omega times R. You remember I talked about that last time when I was in the large lecture hall, uh, when I was trying to, you know, when, when I got filmed on that, we, we talked about the similarities in that and other places where we were as well uh, before we got here. So you're looking at this, and we know that, you know, we know a bunch of things here, guys. We know that distance is, you know, distance is theta times R, you know, that connection that goes on there, guys. Uh, B is D divided by T, which is theta R, divided by t. Theta divided by t is omega, and that's where you got the omega. That's the omega r, looking like b. This guy's that, whatever. Uh, and it's going around, we got what we got. We talked about a lot of stuff. Well, let me try to, like I said, let me try to summarize a bit of what's happening here, guys. If you were let me, I mean, I guess there's, there's a whole bunch of things I guess we'd say here. Let me Four centripetal is mv squared over r. ac is v squared over r. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we know that v squared, we know that v is omega r, so the quantity, the quantity omega r squared is omega squared r squared. Well, omega squared r squared divided by r Omega squared r squared divided by r is just omega squared r. So at the end of the day, this thing, you know, you, you kick this thing around all over the place. 
and it ends up coming out to omega squared r squared over r. We said how that plays out. We said uh, this is this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We got this. We said AC is omega squared r. Now I want you to kind of keep this in mind because in place of r, you can put an a. Um, and it kind of looks like this. This is, this is of interest. It's kind of interest. Um, there's a lot to it. Like I, said, I, I think when I speak to you guys, when I get a chance to speak to you guys in person, uh, in the future, we'll, we'll talk. We'll definitely talk about this. But there's there's a lot happening here. I just I, I guess I, I got to tell you a lot of what's happening when we do it. Um, so there's a lot here. We do a lot of stuff here, guys. Uh, I do want to say this: the period to go around once is one over the frequency. The frequency is one over the period. Okay, so they're, they, we said how they are inverses of one another when you're doing this. And there are some interesting conclusions that come into, that, that come into play here. And I, I've got this in my, in my writing. I got this in my writing about oscillations. Uh, and there's where I derive stuff too with differential equations. And um, so we got it. And I think I, I, I think I mentioned that in the last. You'll see it on the other video as well, you guys. There, you'll have it on the other video as well. Um, if you were, well, I tried to put this thing in the middle of the circle. That sure does not look like the middle of the circle, guys. And now I curve it, so I don't know. I'm inventing my own mathematics as we go along here. Okay, so, but anyway, pretend that's a circle. It, it looks kind of like a circle. Pretend I know how to draw a radius. If this thing's whipping around like this, you guys, if you had a screen, a screen right here, and there was a light flashing this way, and you wanted to look at the shadow. How the shadow moved up and down. Now, you already saw what I wrote here, guys, so I'm gonna erase this, if you don't mind. It's just too much clutter there, I think. If you wanna see how the shadow moves up and down, it moves up and down with something called simple harmonic motion. And you can derive the behavior of that. Remember, I said R, capital A and R are the same thing. You end up getting, and we'll say X is, it doesn't look like an X, this looks more like a Y, guys. This looks like a Y, but we'll call it X. Its location, right here, its location X, or its location, you know, when, when the guy comes down here, you know, whatever. It's location X right here, the other X, whatever, whatever location you got. It's location X can be shown. I say, what is he doing? And he's flashing, he's flashing a light, he's flashing a light, hitting the mass here, and as the mass rolls around, as the mass rolls around, there's a shadow that moves up and down. And it moves up and down with something called simple harmonic motion. This can be I derived this rigorously. Rack somewhat rigorously, I think rather rigorously. I derive it using calculus in here, in the same exact notes. Look at it, if you wish. You can also do it using the circle, and it comes out the same. It comes out the same. That's the, it's bizarre. So if this guy right here would be zero, this would be x equals zero right here, for example. So this is simple harmonic motion. This would be x equals zero. This would be x equals whatever it is, and this would be x equals whatever it is here, right? And I'm saying you can write that as a function, and x equals x equals a. There's other ways to write this. There's other considerations that can be brought into play. We're not going there. We don't need to go there. For our purposes, we're okay. We start at a certain point. Uh, if x is equal to zero, I guess I, you'd start right here. You'd start right here and x equals zero, and then it find itself up here. What's that? You know, whatever the answer would be on that. Um, and how this thing plays out. Now, which one's which? Uh, you're looking at, 
It's a little, now, 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 now I can get a little, now I get really messy. Um, try to think here for a second. Right, okay. You could look at it even from this perspective. I, I could actually, I could start it here, no matter where I started. But the way I got this, you gotta be careful here. The way you got it set up, this thing's rolling this way. You're making the angle with the vertical to be able to do the cosine. If you were not making the angle with the vertical and you were making it with the horizontal, you'd have to use the sine function. I got news for you. The sine function and the cosine function are in many regards so identical, you can use them interchangeably. If you do a lot of, if you do the right things with one function or the other, I can make every cosine function look like the sine function. I can make every sine function, I can make every cosine function look like the sine function, I can make every sine function look like the cosine function. So when you do this, and again, this, there's some calculus that goes into this. So you don't have to do this, this second thing right here. If you know what I'm doing with calculus, that's great. If not, just stay here. This is just the V, the V of the up and down. This is the V of the up and, of the up and down, you guys. So it's more like, it's not the same as this V. This V right here is a constant. The V I'm talking about here is the up and down. It's more like a V sub X. And I didn't really write it like that. I didn't really write it like that, but that's that it's it because this uh, the, the other D I didn't write it like that in the notes, so please be, be aware of that. But that's the V sub X, the up and down. This V is a constant, it's different than that, so you gotta watch out for that. Uh, when I wrote those notes the first time, I didn't obviously did not notice that. Uh, I notice it now, so you know it. Uh, it's gonna be this. Negative means you're going down. Negative means you're going down. Positive, you're going up. And I just told you this thing about cosine and sine can kind of be made into a trivial matter. You still got to know what you're talking about. But I can make every cosine function into a sine function, and I can make every sine function into a cosine function. All right. Um, so you got this right here. Don't worry about this. Those of you who've got the calc background and have seen me do the calc background stuff, and you can want to look at my derivation later on, please look at that. If not, stay here. Stay right here. And you got this. Could have just as easily written it with sine function here and cosine function there and sine function there. If I was talking about, if I was slashing the light a different way or if I wanted to, to do some mathematical manipulation, don't sweat that too much. But again, the starting point's right here. This guy's rotating right here, and that's how I got it, that's how you're gonna see it in the notes. Um, they talk about movement of waves, if they're if, if standing with traveling waves. And they talk about a lot of times they'll say that y equals a sine. Uh, and let's see exactly how it will be done in a second here. Let me just see. They talk about traveling waves, you guys. And I'll go, forgive me, let me come, let me come over here. It might be a little easier. For traveling waves, you guys, let me just write this down and just explain it really quick and then we're done. Um, this is a function of two variables. Cosine or sine is what you can use. I'll use cosine right here. Uh, 2 pi x over lambda plus or minus small t over capital T, which is the period. Capital T is the period. We got this. The plus, the wave travels to the left. 
that way. Kind of odd, I think plus goes this way. Plus the wave travels to the left. So the plus symbol here. Plus wave travels to the left. Minus goes to the right. That came from a lot of stuff. Uh, I'll make kind of a, a long story short on that, but uh, if you're hard to say anything on it, that this came from essentially this, and this will be it on that, guys. Um, a cosine uh, 2 pi over L, 2 pi over lambda, rather, it's wavelength, times x plus or minus 2 pi over t, big T, times small t. This right here is omega. That's omega. This right here is k, so it gets written a cosine kx, where the 2 pi over lambda is k, plus or minus 2 pi over t, if we do the mathematics based on stuff I've shown you in the past, uh, two pi radians are done in one period. Two pi radians, two pi radians are traversed in one period of time. The period you go all the way around. Two pi radians are traversed in one period. Two pi over t is omega. And this tells you the plus means you go to the left, the minus means you go to the right, and that's how traveling waves work. I'm going to have to get with you guys, and I will, uh, during the semester, we can talk in person about it. Okay, thank you so much, you guys, for your time. I appreciate it.